Hello friends, we all know about the binomial distribution. We have been teaching regarding binomial distribution at various levels of maybe 11th and 12th college level and of course at CA foundation level. Today in this video, we are going to discuss very intuitive idea and concept regarding binomial distribution. We all know that the mean of binomial distribution is n into p. But have we ever tried to think about the logic or the derivative derivation behind that? So today in this video, I am going to discuss about, I am going to answer the question why the mean of binomial distribution is n into p. I am sure that you will like this video. Please share your reviews regarding the video so that I can make a series of this kind of interesting video. So let's start with you know the intuitive idea regarding the mean of binomial distribution. See we all know one thing that the probability mass function of the binomial distribution is, is ncx into p raised to x into q raised to n minus x right where we all know that this p is the probability of the success q is the probability of the failure n is the number of trials which we do in an experiment and x is the number of times we need to be successful in our you know situation so now one more thing that i would like to highlight here is you know when we talk about the mean for the first time in our life when we learned about the mean you know we we have been given a formula that x bar that is mean is equal to sigma fi xi upon n i am sure that we all are very very familiar with this formula sigma fi xi upon n now if we transform this formula from a simple arithmetic mean to the expected value of the probability then then we will get a formula transformed like this you know the expected value of the probability will be sigma pi into xi you know this fi will be replaced by pi because when we compute the arithmetic mean we have a frequency that shows the repetition of the observation but when we talk about the probability you know that that fi is actually replaced by the probability of the event right and the xi remains same which is a variable which is a variable under study i should say precisely and why i am not putting this n here you know n is total frequency we all know that n is equal to nothing but sigma fi in classified data and so here here the n should be equal to sigma pi and sigma pi is nothing but equal to 1 and that's why i am not putting the n here so i am sure that you are getting this idea that the simple formula of the mean is being transformed here into the formula of mathematical expectation or say expected value so after doing this now let us start with the main derivation or the main proof of the mean of the binomial distribution so we have already established a fact that expected value expected value of a probabilistic variable is nothing but you know sigma pi into xi where this pi denotes the probability and this xi denotes the value of the variable so now in binomial distribution this probability can be represented by the mass function of the probability so i can write down it like this expected value in case of binomial distribution is sigma now is uh, you know uh, in in the place of this pi what i can write down is the actual formula of the binomial distribution or the probability mass function of the binomial distribution which is ncx into p raised to x into q raised to n minus x and this xi would remain this xi would remain same you know i am just putting the value of x here i am taking out this i you know from the notation because that i is not required that just shows that this is a variable and keeps on changing the value right so i am sure that you are you are getting this step and this step is very easy for you to understand now let us do some sort of manipulation here to establish the formula like here i can write down equal to now ncx now this ncx has a formula let me put a big sigma here 
and into bracket we can write down it is n factorial divided by n minus x factorial into x factorial into p raised to x into q raised to n minus x let us complete the bracket and this x is still the outside variable so let me put into x i am sure that we all know what is the formula of ncx right so i am just expanding and trying to solve the formula now let us go ahead what can be the next step here see in the next step what i want to do is i want to expand the formula of ncx further i can put n into n minus 1 factorial and on the denominator side i can put n minus x factorial here i let me put x into x minus 1 factorial we all know that this kind of expansion is possible here right into p raised to p raised to x into q raised to n minus x let us keep them same as before and into the variable x now the interesting fact is that this x is also a variable and this x is also the variable and as they have the relation of multiplication you know we can we can cut it out yes one one thing we should keep in mind that this is a bracket but the sigma is applicable to the entire bracket because it is sigma pi into xi so, you know to understand the fact let me put another bracket also so that you can understand that sigma is actually on the outside of the formula so this x this x and this x would cancel out so this gives us you know the basic idea that now we have some less things to cope up with in the formula now let us do very interesting step i can write down it like this now it is very very interesting sigma into big bracket we have we have n into n minus 1 factorial divided by we have n minus x factorial and x minus 1 factorial into let me write down now like this i want to put p raised to x minus 1 into p right see here we have p raised to x so i can break it down into two more expressions like p raised to x minus 1 and into p and simply here let me keep the same q raised to n minus x so now we have only this much of thing because the x had been cancelled out in the previous step now this is very interesting see here we have two numbers which are constant now which are those two numbers so n is a constant this n is a constant and on the other hand this p is also the constant and one very interesting thing which you must be knowing you know uh, that if it is a constant it can be taken out common you know common number when we are doing sigma maths so let me show it here i am doing my step further over here i am sure that you all are with me and you are getting it now let me take this n into p outside the sigma so now i can write down n into p outside the sigma i am taking this constant out and that gives me sigma sigma n minus 1 n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus x factorial and x minus 1 x minus 1 factorial right x minus 1 factorial into we have p raised to x minus 1 and into we have q raised to n minus x so this is it what we have now now it is very important to understand suppose suppose i presume that a is equal to suppose n minus 1 and and b is equal to suppose x minus 1 if i presume like this then will you tell me what will be a minus b for me yes a minus b will become n minus x n minus x and you know minus n minus x it will become n minus x minus let me just write it down properly right n minus 1 minus x plus 1 so now this 1 and 1 would cancel out so a minus b 
will become will become actually n minus x so we have very important result here we are presuming something that a is equal to n minus 1 b is equal to x minus 1 so a minus b will become n minus 1 minus x plus 1 so a minus b will will become n minus x now let me put this result into this formula so we we are on the verge of completion of the proof i am sure that many of you have got the answer already so it is np into i can write down n minus 1 is a so it is a factorial divided by n minus x is nothing but a minus b so it is a minus b factorial and x minus 1 is, is nothing but b so it is b factorial right and into into p raise to p raise to b into q raise to q raise to a minus b this is what we are getting here so going further what we will get is now i can write down it like this n into p right and sigma sigma i can write down a c b into p raised to b into q raised to a minus b now this is something very interesting you know if we try to understand that this looks like a formula of the probability which we started with before right see here we have n c x into p raised to x into q raised to n minus x and this looks like a same formula sigma a c b into p raised to b into q raised to a minus b so this is nothing this is nothing but n p into sigma of the probability right sigma of the probability of the variable x and what is sigma p into x yes sigma sigma p into x is nothing but 1 so the probability of x is 1 so we can we can simply understand that this will become 1 and hence it is proved that the mean of the binomial distribution is nothing but n into p so with this we can get the exact idea that why you know the mean of binomial distribution is n into p i am sure that you all have enjoyed the video you all have you know uh, try to understand the proof i am sure that many of you have already the knowledge about it but still i felt that i should make it i should use our you know unexpected vacation and do something good for the knowledge sharing purpose so i think this is the best way of doing it i request my fellow colleagues and my senior faculty members to please share your review on this video so that i can make more videos like this and we can share our knowledge and we can make together the quality of you know education of our classes sky high thank you so much for seeing the video thank you so much